Hello and good evening, friends. Today is the third talk of the master series of the ACNS webinars, and we are blessed with the presence of the two most prolific researchers in neurosurgery with us today. The speaker and the chair who have accepted our invitation for today's webinar have co-authored more than 100 articles together in various leading neurosurgery journals. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please introduce you the speaker for today, Professor Tetsuyoshi Horiuchi, who is the chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery, Shinsu University School of Medicine, Matsumoto, Japan. Professor Horiuchi will be talking about the technical nuances of clipping of paraclinoid aneurysm. To chair this session today, we have with us Professor Kazura Hongo, who was a former professor at the Shinsu University School of Medicine. He is currently the director of INS Central Hospital, Nagano, Japan. On behalf of the Education Committee and the President, Professor Yoko Kato, I welcome both the speaker and the chair to this online platform of ACNS webinars. As always, Dr. Liu Boon Seng from Malaysia is my co-host for today. Welcome, Liu. And with that, may I please request Professor Horiuchi to please start his webinar talk. Thank you, Professor Hongo, for kind of introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to have an opportunity for this presentation. I would like to present surgical anatomy and clipping technique for paraclinoid carotid artery aneurysm. Paraclinoid carotid artery aneurysm, including four intradural proximal carotid aneurysm, originating from the internal carotid artery between the distal dural ring and the origin of the posterior. At the first, anterior crinoid process is key structures as bony anatomy. Anterior crinoid process is the most important structure for paraclinoid aneurysm. The anterior crinoid process is located on the medial end of the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. Usually, anterior crinoid process is removed in all cases with high-speed drill or a bone cleft. The optic strut is another important bony structure between the optic canal and the superior orbital fissure. The strut should be removed in some but not all cases for paraclinoid aneurysm. Pneumatization of the anterior crinoid process depending on individual. Therefore, bone window CT is necessary to avoid post-operative CS leakage for anterior crinoid process clearly. I think the distal dural ring is key structure. The distal dural ring is very complicated. These figures indicating the relationship between anterior crinoid process and dural ring. The left figure showing the lateral view of the left paraclinoid region before the removal of the process. And right one showing the same view after removal of the process. The upper membrane over the process representing distal dural ring. The lower membrane representing the proximal ring. These cadaveric photos showing the overview of the paraclinoid area. The dura around the anterior crinoid process is cut and reflected. This asterisk indicating the removal site of the anterior crinoid process. As I presented the previous 
schema, the distal and proximal ring are visualized after removal of the anterior clinoid process. Last is vascular anatomy. The ophthalmic artery usually originating from the internal carotid artery below the optic nerve and above the distal dural ring from the medial surface of its supraclinoid portion causing anterolaterally below optic nerve to enter the optic canal. I think that the origin of the ophthalmic artery is important landmark to identify the exact aneurysm location because the ophthalmic artery origin is located at just the distal side of the distal dural ring. Thus, the aneurysmal neck is located at distal side of the ophthalmic artery origin. It's indicating this aneurysm will be intradural aneurysm. In addition, intradural origin of the ophthalmic artery is known as a normal variation. This variation is reported in 2000 from Shinshu University. This normal variation is difficult to identify based on preoperative angiogram. This illustration written by Dr. Kyoshima showing interdural origin of the ophthalmic artery. I study the incidence of interdural origin of the ophthalmic artery and the result was published in Journal of Neurosurgery in 2009. Interdural origin of the ophthalmic artery is roughly 7%. This incidence was relatively high than I expected. I will show one case of interdural origin of ophthalmic artery. And this is the dorsal wall of paracrinoid aneurysm. You can see left dorsal aneurysm here and left optic nerve is here and internal carotid artery is here. This is distal dural ring. Dural ring dissection will cause ophthalmic artery injury due to interdural location of ophthalmic artery. Uterior hypophysial artery is also important. This artery arising between the distal dural ring and the posterior communicating artery. Superior hypophysial artery has been focused as an important artery feeding the optic nerve and the chiasm. In 2007, Dr. Goto reported that Temporary occlusion of superior hypophysial artery inducing loss of VEP. However, this case had a history of clipping surgery for the contralateral rupture 
internal properties are asked to be aneurysm. In 2015, I analyzed the visual disturbance in patient with paracrinal carotid artery aneurysm. I studied whether superior hypophysal artery sacrifice inducing the visual impairment or not. In this article, I conclude the unilateral superior hypophysal artery sacrifice may be safe in many, but not all cases. This table showing clinical characteristics in no visual impairment group and visual impairment group. SHA sacrifice had no effect of post-operative visual impairment. By contrast, simultaneous clipping surgery for bilateral paracrinoid carotid artery aneurysm was a significant risk factor for visual impairment. I will present the visual impairment case treated for bilateral superior hypophysial artery aneurysm simultaneously. A 74-year-old woman is referred to our hospital for subarachnoid hemorrhage. A ruptured left superior hypophysial artery aneurysm found and unruptured right superior hypophysial artery aneurysm with middle cerebral artery aneurysm is also visualized. Preoperatively, no visual disturbance is noted. After the left cervical internal carotid artery was secured, a left frontotemporal craniotomy is performed. At that time, VEP monitoring was not available. The right-sided aneurysm was with superior hypophysial artery was clipped using a curved clip. The left-sided aneurysm, including the superior hypophysial artery, was also obliterated using two ring clips. Postoperatively, the patient complained of visual disturbance in both eyes. Detailed ophthalmological examination was not performed because of poor general condition. The visual symptom gradually improved and the patient was transferred to a rehabilitation hospital. There are anastomosis between right and left superior hypophysial artery. In addition, another arteries connect the superior hypophysial arteries. Therefore, I think the unilateral proximal superior hypophysial artery sacrifice will not induce the ischemia of the optic apparatus. Next topic is surgical strategies for successful treating. It including approach selection, visual evoked motor potential monitoring, proximal control at cervical internal carotid artery, adequate intradural bony removal and distal dural ring dissection, and temporary occlusion of superior hypophysial artery and over ophthalmic artery. Ruptured paracrinoid carotid artery aneurysm 
are treated by a ipsilateral approach for proximal control. By contrast, in unruptured aneurysm, ipsilateral or contralateral approach is selected according to preoperative neuroimage. The aneurysm projecting medially or inferomedially can be clipped through contralateral craniotomy. Dr. Kakizawa presented the parameter of contralateral approach in neurosurgery 2000. The polyhyadinic system is a key space and the relationship between the optic nerve and aneurysm very important. VEP has been introduced as an interoperative visual function monitoring since December 2004. VEP is useful to evaluate surgical manipulation induced damage and ischemia related to superior hypophysial artery and ophthalmic artery. There is no question of importance of proximal control in aneurysm surgery. The affective cervical carotid artery is routinely prepared for proximal control. The retrograde suction decompression technique is applied in some large aneurysm. I usually perform intradural bony removal with high speed drill or bone curet. An advantage of intradural removal, including the direct vision of the important neural and vascular structures and the minimum but sufficient removal can be achieved. Sufficient distal dural ring dissection is essential to mobilize internal carotid artery for clipping surgery. I will show you video of bony removal and distal dural ring dissection. This is a right side approach. You can see optic nerve annulase and the internal carotid artery. After sufficient exposure, these structures, the dura is cut and reflected. A nylon suture is placed and bone curate is removed for anteracrinoid process and adequate section of the distal dural ring is performed. I perform temporary occlusion of superior hypophysial artery, whether VEP degreasing or not, during surgery. This video showing the temporary occlusion This is optic nerve. This is an uh, internal carotid artery. Control ICG showing superior hypophysial artery patency. And then microclip is applied for temporary occlusion of superior hypophysial artery, whether VEP is changed or not. <coughs> During temporary occlusion, VEP is not changed and temporary clip is removed and aneurysm is obliterated using curved clip like this. Follow up ICG showing the patency of superior hypophysial artery. 
contemporary occlusion of the ophthalmic artery is also performed. Based on my experience, no VEP change occurred under temporary occlusion of ophthalmic artery. I will show you the video. Uh, this is a right-sided approach. You can see a thick nerve, annulus, and the internal carotid artery. Control ICG showing uh, this is a uh, ophthalmic artery. The ophthalmic artery is dissected from optic nerve like this. And the ophthalmic artery is temporarily occluded using mini temporary clip whether VEP change or not. No VEP change is observed. Side curved clip is used for obliteration. In Shinshu University Hospital, paraclinoid carotid artery aneurysm are classified into five groups. Carotid ophthalmic artery aneurysm, superior hypophysial artery aneurysm, carotid cave aneurysm, dorsal aneurysm, and others based on preoperative neuroimages. I will show some cases of surgical cases. This case is one of carotid ophthalmic artery aneurysm. 61 year old woman was referred for incidental aneurysm. Angiogram showing a large paraclinoid aneurysm. Ophthalmic artery originated from aneurysmal dome. Coronal MRI showing the aneurysm compressing the optic nerve. I will show you the video. This is right-sided approach. And you can see it should be on fissure. This is optic nerve. Uh, this is internal carotid artery. And you can see aneurysm. The anterior crinoid process is removed intradurally. <clears throat> the dura is reflected. And nylon tie is placed like this. And brain retractor is placed to protect the important structures. The bone curet is used. The distal dural ring is sectioned adequately. And the aneurysm is dissected from optic nerve. And the aneurysm is temporarily trapped at the cervical and the intradural region. And the aneurysm is fully exposed.
under temporary occlusion. The clip is applied for obliteration to preserve ophthalmic artery. Small remnant was clipped using mini titanium clip. The next case is dorsal paraplanoid aneurysm. The patient was 35 year old woman. She presented with a headache and MRI demonstrated a dorsal paraplanoid carotid artery aneurysm. She had an allergy against contrast medium. Follow up MRI showing the enlargement of the aneurysm. Clipping surgery was performed. This figure showing the setup of the surgery. I will show the video. This is also right sided approach. You can see optic nerve and internal carotid artery. And this is an aneurysm. And the medial cerebral fissure is sufficiently opened. And anterocrinoidectomy is performed. The same procedure is performed. This is a distal dural ring. The aneurysm neck is exposed. The lateral distal dural ring and the medial distal dural ring is also dissected. Under temporary occlusion of the cervical internal carotid artery, further dissection is performed. The aneurysm is fully exposed. Control ICG showing the aneurysm. Under temporary occlusion of internal carotid artery, the aneurysm is obliterated using clip. Follow up ICG showing obliteration of aneurysm. Post operative course was uneventful. Uh, this is post operative 3D CT showing removal of 
until the crying in the process, and you can see the aneurysm free. The patient had an allergy against the contrast medium, so there was no angiogram postoperatively. Next case is superior hypophyseal artery aneurysm. The case is 46 year old woman. Incidental aneurysm was found on neuroimaging. And this is 3D DSA showing SHA aneurysm like this. I will show the video this case. Uh, this is a left-sided approach. And this is the aneurysm. The anterior cross process is removed bone turret. And this is the aneurysm, this is dural link. The aneurysm fully exposed from surrounding structures. A surge cell is used to create some space between aneurysm and surrounding structures. Control ICG showing Ring clip is used for obliteration. Postoperative course is okay, and postoperative CTA showing good <laughs> obliteration of the aneurysm. I will show you SHA aneurysm treated with contralateral approach. The case is 67 year old woman. She suffered from Parkinson's disease and MRI disclosed the paracrinoid aneurysm. The aneurysm is small but has an irregular shape. The aneurysm located in the pre-chiasmatic shift tan. Therefore, contralateral approach was selected. If lateral cervical internal carotid artery is prepared and contralateral frontotemporal craniotomy is performed. You can see the right optic nerve. And this is a uh, left optic nerve. You can see right olfactory nerve. I dissected from frontal lobe. The dura around cranum sphenoidale and tuberculum sera is partially removed. And this is a superior hypophyseal artery. It is occluded with microclip and dissection is proceeding. And this is an uh, aneurysm. The aneurysm dissected from surrounding structures. VEP 
is not to change it under temporary occlusion of SHA. So SHA can be sacrificed. So the clip is applied. The SHA is also obliterated. They are related. The tip of clip blade is confirmed to occur the annulus. A second clip is used for the enforcement. After surgery, she did not complain of visual disturbance and anosmia. Post-operative CTA showing complete clipping of the aneurysm. This is the last case. The patient is 66-year-old woman Two paracrinoid carotid artery aneurysm were found on brain checker. You can see carotid ophthalmic aneurysm and SHA aneurysm. Follow up angiography showing enlargement of proximal aneurysm. You can see the bullet of aneurysm like this. The surgical treatment was planned. Initially, an endovascular obliteration was tried. Balloon occlusion test of the ophthalmic artery was preoperatively performed because endovascular treatment resulted in the ophthalmic artery occlusion. Lateral view of the right carotid injection showing the ophthalmic artery. And choroid brush is also visualized. The ophthalmic artery was occluded with balloon. No colloidal brush was seen. This result indicating the ophthalmic artery should be preserved and endovascular treatment is not recommended. The patient was referred and the clipping surgery was done. This is superior hypophysial artery. Anterior crinoid process is removed as usual manner. And also this dural ring is sectioned adequately. <clears throat> and this, this is a distal annulus. And you can see many superior hypophysial arteries. And this is the distal aneurysm. The superior hypophysial artery are temporarily occluded at two points, whether VEP degrees or not. No change of VEP is observed under temporary occlusion. 
So temporary clip is removed. And this is a proximal aneurysm. You can see small grip like this. And the distal distal ring is sectioned at the medial side to expose the ophthalmic artery. And this is ophthalmic artery. The ophthalmic artery is temporarily occluded using clip. Additionally, superior hypophysial artery <coughs> are clipped simultaneously. At this moment, VP is also stable. All temporary clips are removed. You can see a bullet of aneurysm at proximal aneurysm. The bionic type clip is applied not to occur the the ophthalmic artery. And distal aneurysm is obliterated mini clip like this. ICG is showing patency of the ophthalmic artery. And some SHA is not visualized. After surgery, no visual disturbance occurred and follow up CTA showing good obliteration of aneurysm. In conclusion, Surgical anatomy and clipping technique for paracrinoid carotid artery aneurysms are presented. Clipping surgery is still a useful treatment in endovascular error. VEP monitoring might be essential in paracrinoid carotid artery aneurysm surgery. Thank you for kind attention. Okay, uh, Professor Aruchi, thank you very much uh, for nice uh, presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Hongo. Uh, I'm, it's quite an honor and pleasure to be, uh, to be invited as a chair of this session. Thank you, Dr. Roger. Well, as chair, I'd like to uh, comment on Professor Horiuchi's uh, presentation. Well, uh, today he focused on surgical technique, mainly clipping of the paracolinoid aneurysm of internal carotid artery. And the vascular procedure is uh, being done mainly uh, for this particular region. And I know that the, in Shinshu University, uh, you do clipping surgery, and, but uh, in a team, you have an uh, expert and vascular surgeon. So I think uh, you do. Uh, treating, treat the uh, patient with uh, paracrine and Allison uh, is a team. I know that the, but not all paracrine and can be, can be treated with endovascular. So I think, uh, as you just mentioned, uh, the surgical technique, surgical clipping of this region uh, should be done. And I think uh, the quality of the surgery can be expected higher because of endovascular procedure is also being advanced uh, day by day. And you showed very nicely uh, the anatomy of this uh, region uh, regarding the surgical clipping and the technique of surgery and also showing uh, various uh, complications such as uh, visual complication 
and uh, you showed also how to recover from the complication during surgery. I think I know that I learned that the uh, VP, visual epoch potential monitoring is quite essential. Nicely, you showed various uh, uh, cases. Thank you very much. Okay. And I think I have, uh, we have uh, some more time. So as chair, yeah. I, I like to, uh, can I ask a several question to Professor Haruchi, Dr. Yeah. Raja? Yeah, please. First, I'd like to know, uh, yeah, you do creeping surgery for this region, but the uh, worldwide uh, many doctors are doing endovascular procedure, coiling or stent uh, for this region. So currently in your institute in Shinshu University, what's the percentage, how, uh, how is the ratio of creeping surgery uh, versus uh, uh, endovascular treatment, roughly speaking? I don't know the exact number. However, there was only one case in 2019. Probably 10 or 15 cases are coiled, such as stent assisted coiling or flow diverter stenting. So the number is decreasing, decreasing in Shinshu University Hospital. Okay, yeah, and so even in Shinshu University, Professor Sugita uh, developed many creeps, but still, yeah, the ratio is decreasing. I mean, the creeping surgery uh, becomes less and less. So how do you decide for uh, which treatment uh, should be done for this particular patient or other patient as a team? Uh, how do you decide uh, uh, what kind of uh, factors you have? I think the patient suffered from visual uh, disturbance uh, causing uh, the aneurysm compressing the visual apparatus. Uh, I think creeping surgery is superior than coiling to reduce volume effect. However, most of patients choose endovascular surgery comparing with direct surgery. The patient don't like the direct surgery. Hey, you showed us uh, various uh, uh, creeping cases. The majority of the anism uh, is rather uh, small or medium size. I think in this area, I mean, palacolinoid portion, I think uh, not so many cases of large or even giant anism because uh, it, also, it, it may be in Counted uh, uh, at the anison, uh, there are some larger giant, but in this uh, clinal portion, not many cases of large or giant. But uh, how about you? You have uh, some large or giant anisms of this uh, region. Recently, I have no case for giant aneurysm, so I don't know the exact reason. Uh, there is no uh, large aneurysm right now. Okay, if uh, you have a uh, large size aneurysm in this uh, region or a little bit uh, distal, uh, so-called IC, PC, or uh, C1, C2 portion, in that case, uh, uh, what kind of technique you use for dealing with uh, large or giant aneurysm? Thank you. The aneurysm is involved in the anterior colloidal artery and it's a problem. So simple clipping is difficult to treat such complicated aneurysm. In this situation, proximal occlusion and bypass, uh, this technique is useful to uh, maintain the patient uh, motor function. So simple clipping is not recommended involving the anterocoroidal artery. Uh, talking about the palacline or you, uh, I know that you do proximal clipping, a proximal control, uh, expose uh, the in, in cult artery at the neck, uh, am I right? It is, uh, how often do you do a proximal control? In which case, in almost all cases you do proximal control 
or it, it, select yeah go ahead please secure as a uh, all cases all cases in yes. uh, even in uh, unruptured or included yes any question from yeah, the i think thank you for the chair yes. and uh, for the brief discussion now may i please open this platform to, for discussion uh, i would like to invite professor hirotoshi sano who is here with us professor sano in a, in a large case is I, I recommend of the proximal control of the neck, sometimes using the, the uh, intervention. Or, or the, the, if giant one, is neck open is much better. This thing maybe is uh, very important for doing the paraplenoid anus because the IVR is very progressive now. Even so, the surgery should be more uh, safe and uh, if something uh, anism surgery is how safe we are doing then if it's ruptured but uh, the, uh, the IVR is just pushing the, the, the uh, coil however the surgery can be approaching of the uh, proximal control and suctioning and then uh, to, to recover of the the uh, uh, carotid artery itself, then if something happens, surgery is much more safe. That is the biggest point, biggest advantage, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sano, for joining us today. Have a safe drive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, my dear friend Liu, would you like to come in? Yeah, Prof. Uh, I just want to find uh, out uh, regarding your contralateral approach uh, in, in terms of positioning of the body to be able to have the neck incision for the proximal control. Thank you. Uh, firstly, the ipsilateral carotid, neck carotid artery exposed and then positioned contralaterally and Craniotomy is powerful. Understand, Prof. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Professor Ajit Sinha. Yeah, uh, first of all, congratulations. It was a very nice presentation, Professor. Why do you put a temporary clip on the ophthalmic artery before aneurysm clipping? You can directly put a uh, clip on the aneurysm and not uh, even temporarily occlude the ophthalmic artery because that artery is important, it can get dissected from inside and it can lead to thrombosis. It is not necessary to temporary occlusion of ophthalmic artery, is right? Right. Ah, yeah. I understand. However, I'm interested in the ophthalmic artery is uh, important to feeder for retina or not. So uh, I would like to confirm the in ophthalmic artery rule in retinal circulation. Right. Thank you. Yeah, Thank one, you. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, please. Please, Dr. Yeah. yeah, Professor, now is the era of endovascular treatment and uh, the endovascular uh, surgeons, they are not at all bothered about uh, to do a preoperative ophthalmic artery occlusion test uh, because uh, they think that uh, even the flow diameter will allow the flow through the ophthalmic artery or superior hypofacial artery. So have you, have you done any clipping of the case which has been treated previously by endovascular therapy and is still the aneurysm is persisting? I have some experience before endovascular surgery treatment cases. However, uh, these cases are treated proximal occlusion and bypass. So the aneurysm it's not touch it directly. Thank you, thank you very much. Kimura Sensei, are you here? Professor Hidenito Kimura? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, nice to see you here, Professor Horiuchi. I'm Hidenito Kimura, working at the Kobe University. And so thank you for your excellent presentation and uh, sh showing your uh, uh, meticulous procedures, especially in dissecting the aneurysm dome around the surrounding structure. Very nice techniques. So my question is, do, do you perform the uh, uh, suction decompression technique, especially for the giant uh, large paracrinal aneurysm. So to, to preserve the super high artery is uh, in, in treating the large 
uh, paracrinal aneurysm. Very, very nice technique. I think I sometimes I use the technique. So, but you didn't mention it in your presentation today. So, how about your comment? Thank you very much. Uh, I like suction decompression technique. It's very useful to reduce the aneurysm size and flipping surgery, especially for large aneurysm. And I think uh, unilateral SHS sacrifice will not induce the visual impairment. So uh, I think the obliteration aneurysm, the first line to treat aneurysm, not to uh, preserve the SHA. But sometimes we need to preserve, of course, we need to always preserve the superior hypothyroid artery. So in, to treat the giant and large paracrinal aneurysm, so first, we, I, tried, I, I performed the suction decompression technique to decompress the aneurysm dome. So, and then we can visualize the superior hypothyroid artery so well. So to preserve the yeah, SHA is very, very eff effective technique. I, I have the same comment to the temporary occlusion of the superior, uh, super, superior hypothyroid artery. So once you, once you confirm the patency, once you con uh, confirm the uh, trace, uh, uh, super high physical artery. So I don't think uh, you you don't apply the temporary clip. Just uh, try to clip the uh, inside the clip, apply the dome. So don't need to. I don't. I don't need to perform the temporary occlusion for the SHG. So I don't think about the, about the advantage of the temporary occlusion of the SHG. So sometimes it may ink as postoperative vasospasm to the SHG may occur. So so unintentional deterioration uh, visual disturbance may occur. So I don't think to use the temporal occlusion of the SHA. Thank you very much. Uh, based on my experience, uh, no visual disturbance uh, related to temporary occlusion of SHA is occurred. And I confirmed the patency of SHA after the you know, removal of temporary occlusion using ICG. No occlusion related to temporary occlusion is occurred in my series. So I think temporary occlusion of SHA uh, would be safe. Thank you, Kimura Sensei, for joining us. Uh, one question I would like to ask Professor Horiuchi Sensei is that you have written that article about visual outcomes for superior hypophysial artery aneurysms. But what about your experience in uh, ophthalmic segment aneurysms. Do you have any experience of visual declines for an ophthalmic segment aneurysms? I have some experience of minor visual impairment of ophthalmic segment aneurysm. So yeah. probably surgical manipulation will induce the optic nerve damage, not ischemia. What about, what, what about your experience, Professor Hongo? Oh, yes. Uh... Uh, I also have no experience of uh, visual impairment uh, on that region, but uh, because of the manipulation, uh, I think uh, we have uh, some cases of uh, uh, visual uh, impairment after surgery dealing with the uh, that area, not directly because of the ophthalmic artery. Yes, uh, thank you for your uh, wonderful presentations. Uh, I am Dr. Shui from Myanmar. And I have uh, two questions. Uh, one question is, uh, I would like to know the advantages of the, that occlusion and obliteration of the superior hypophysis are treated in paraclinal aneurysm. Because uh, what I know is uh, uh, in the superior hypophysis artery aneurysm, this occlusion and this uh, testing about the collateral flow is important. But in paraclinal aneurysm, do we really need to uproot or obliterate the superior hypophysis artery? I mean, uh, I can preserve the SHA, uh, please do so. However, the SHA involved in aneurysmal neck body. So at this situation, uh, the temporary occlusion of SHA did not decrease VEP. Yes. Uh, I can sacrifice SHA involved in aneurysm. Yes, 
us. And thank you for the first question. And the second question is uh, in mount for the power cleaner in the uh, we can like easily and widely use the thread, the bright mount, uh, like a flow down bar thread. So in that kind of case, uh, how would you choose the endovascular treatment and the surgical clipping treatment? Your question is uh, which treatment uh, is yes. selected? In Japanese people, uh, the patient uh, like to undergo the endovascular surgery if possible. Yes. However, the mass effect, uh, the aneurysm causing mass effect, I recommend to treat direct surgery for the patient. However, some patients refuse the uh, direct surgery and the patient would like to have uh, endovascular surgery. Thank you for your answers and thank you for your wonderful presentation. And now uh, the presentation about the anatomy is uh, really good. Thank you so much. Dr. Jyotish, would you like to comment, sir? Uh, thank you, uh, Radha. Yeah. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Uh, one question is, when you drill a pneumatized antireclinoid process, and if you accidentally enter into the sphenoid sinus, how do you, uh, what is your technique to avoid a CSF leak? Fortunately, I have no experience of uh, penetration of para nasal sinus uh, when removing the antiracnoidal process. However, uh, I read the article written by Professor Michael Lawton. Uh, his technique is using uh, muscle piece and push into the nasal sinus and it will prevent the CSF leakage. Hello, one yeah. thing. Yeah, is this? The one thing about the, the obliteration of the dura, uh, repairment of the yeah. dura. Yes, please, uh, Dr. Sen. Yes, sandwich method using the neobel seat is the best one, the easy, most easy at that time. You must uh, put the the the, uh, the uh, extra dura part first, uh, and uh, uh, watching the inside of the dura and pull out the the uh, nervous seat uh, of the uh, and attaching very closely. Then using the uh, glue, and then afterward you have to put the, the inside of the dura also the nervous seat. Then makes a sandwich method, that is the easiest. And also, if you opening the uh, uh, bony, uh, bone sinus, maybe you have to put the, the first of the bone tip and the obliterate, and then using the, 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 the uh, uh, bone cement, and then uh, obliterate of the bone should be closed by bone. Do that should be closed by the nervous seat. That is the best way to the, the uh, first time of the uh, closing of the uh, in uh, prevent of the, the uh, CSFP. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Sensei, for joining us again and giving you the expression. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, Can please. I, uh, please. <laughs> regarding the uh, pneumatization, I think the uh, important thing is to uh, evaluate the CD scan before surgery. <clears throat> then we can uh, expect uh, the possibility of uh, opening uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, nasal sinus for uh, pony CT, if possible. Thank you. So I think uh, we can wind up this session now. Uh, on behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yoko Kato, I would like to thank the speaker, Professor Tetsuyoshi Horiuchi, who came here and gave us an exciting talk about the clipping surgery of paraclinoid aneurysms. I thank you, Professor. And also the chair, Professor Kazuhiro Hongo, who took time for us and uh, gave us his expert comments on this topic. Uh, Professor Sano, thank you very much, Sensei. In spite of driving, he gave his expert comments. Thank you, Sensei. So until next Saturday, uh, it is all bye-bye from all of us.